Hey, what's up everybody? So uh, today we're gonna talk about paint consistency, but before a little bit of house cleaning stuff, I apologize for uh, being gone for a month. I did get the leather video up, or the old leather video, and you guys are probably sick of seeing leather because I do it on just about every single figure uh, that we've done has some sort of, of leather on it, but it, as it changes and evolves, so will the video. So you're probably gonna see this, the splitter pattern again. You're probably gonna see you know, a US tanker again in the future, and I'm also gonna break off and do some non-historical stuff and even different historical stuff. So yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun, and uh, as I'm going into the next I think this is our third, my third year doing videos, and this year's been really slow, and I apologize for that, but we're going to get back into the swing of things. If you need a day-to-day -day update on what's going on on my workbench or at the coffee table where I also model, then you, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Scale Model Ian, link in the description below. And also really exciting is I've started helping out um, with Andrea Workshops because the Andrea USA Depot is here and it's a great opportunity for uh, me to learn and teach in person. And I think it's gonna make my videos better. And I've switched almost all to Andrea Paints. Really good learning curve. I'm still got the Vallejos and the Reapers and, and the Citadels and all that other stuff, but it, I have the, the core colors from the Andrea color sets and they're, they, the way they work together is really, really great. And so we're gonna be seeing a lot more of that in the future and I'm gonna talk about how not how you can break away from the set because I think it's inside the sets uh, a paint set is awesome but it's kind of on this chromatic scale but as you know if you've been watching for a long time I, I like to use different colors um, like I'll highlight green with yellow or shadow yellow with purple or you know something completely different so even though we have these chromatic paint sets we can break them up and uh, as, as I progress through the future videos, we'll be able to see how I break those up and, and use them with each other instead of just saying, let's highlight green with green, right? So with that said, let's jump into the consist consistency video. Okay guys and gals, so that was the meat and potatoes of the video. What I wanted to talk about today is paint consistency because it's been a question that's been asked in the comments quite a few times and it was recommended that I use it on a piece of paper and I'd yeah, paper is not really conducive to what we do, I, I, I think. And so what I have here is just a piece of plastic card that I cut into a, a small section and I've primed it with my normal uh, automotive gray primer. And so hopefully the paint, it seems to be sticking to it because it's very, very thin. I just went out this morning and, and dusted some squares and uh, thought, all right, let's go in here and talk about consistency. I've already cut some paint here on the palette and um, I got a fresh glass of water. Always use clean water. If not, you get junk in your brush and you get nasty buildup on your figures. I use blue in my test run, but I'm gonna use green for this. And I'm gonna shake the bottle up a real good. And I'm gonna put it down here on the palette and I'll get it in the frame so you can see it. These are already the things I've been kind of playing with. And even though I'm using a wet palette, you still have to thin the water. And if you're gonna use a wet palette, make sure that you know, I, I, I discussed it in the wet palette video, but make sure that you have surface tension and make sure that the entire um, palette is wet. It's gonna keep the paint wet. That's key to all of this is you have to keep your paint wet. I don't really put out a lot of paint uh, if I'm working on a small area. Um, I'll put down what I feel like I need. And the cool thing, that's a benefit of using a, pe a paint set. Whatever you pick as your base color, you're always gonna know what you know what number you use so here I just have some neat paint and one thing you can do get a little surface tension on my brush sharpen my tip a little bit and then get some neat paint on here now this is not like I said you saw me put it down it's not thinned I'm gonna run it across my thumb here next to the blues it's real thick but it doesn't really move as you can see like it kind of just sticks all right so we don't want the paint to do that. And everything that we do is in layers. So I would say it's better to have to, you know, paint it in two or three layers than it is one thick, crazy layer. Because what we want to be able to do is build up on this. For your base coat, they always say it's a milky consistency. Well, what does that mean? You know, I, I love milk, but I really don't know what that means. So. Um, I only have a little dollop of paint here, so I'm not, I usually have a, oh, almost spilt it. <clears throat> I usually have a little water bottle of, water bottle on my bench. And I use this to, if I put down like a large, if I'm going to base coat like a large thing, then I always have this handy, right? So 
but for this this amount of paint I don't need to do that and we don't want to ever mix or, or anything with our bristles because it's just going to ruin our paintbrush so you know somebody asked before what is that giant ball on the end of your paintbrush well it's just build up of acrylic paint usually so I'll grab a drop of water I'm going to put it on the paint and then I'm going to stir it up little darling and that's about one drop of water to one drop of paint and you can go more we will go more um, but to start out with what I want to show you guys if I get in here and zoom in real close on the paint, you can actually see the paint fold in on itself. Now, I've said this a hundred times in videos. This is a great um, way of knowing that you're kind of in the right area for your, uh, your base consistency. So we can see it kind of suck, draw in on itself, right? And it's kind of neat to see the paint move like that. So let me pop back out. And we, we've seen our neat line. But now that we have the paint thinned a little bit, we'll actually have it's a little bit thinner. And we can go much longer. I'm using a number two brush, so or number one, sorry, Windsor Newton. And it's really wet. And I can pull all the way down to the bottom of the page. So even if you're if you're base coating a figure. And you're not doing such a straight line you can kind of you know build up on that and i usually tend to work in one direction sometimes i, I don't but as we can see like this paint is not very th thick and it moves very well and as i push it out to the edges and you start to get these little nasty bits you can just kind of brush them out and then leave your stuff in the middle and then it's gonna it's gonna build up on itself so you let that layer kind of go and it's almost dry and as we as we increase the layers thin layers of paint it starts to cover our figure right so that's kind of the first idea of consistency now you can thin that out even more and but the problem being is that uh, the pigments will separate so what I've started using to get super thin paint is medium glaze from Vallejo and this works with Andrea it works with Reaper it works with Vallejo um, I haven't tried it with uh, AK or Meg or any of those things because I don't use those paints but um, it's really neat stuff so we already have kind of our watered down thin paint and I can grab some green paint Throw it here off to the side on a pallet. Oop. Then grab some medium glaze that I've put off to the side so I can use it with multiple colors. Throw in that glaze in there and this is gonna give us a translucent layer. So once we've done with our highlights and shadows, we can go back with our base coat and then blend in those edges. So I'll, I'll work between these. And what it does is, is it creates this translucent pigment that you can slowly build up. Now, one thing you guys have seen me use on the channel is this stuff from Citadel, and this is what got me thinking about glazing. And um, this is their shade colors, and they're really neat. They come in these crappy pots that I don't like, but shake them up real good. And this is a purple. And so I'd use the end of my brush again, just like I do with the water, plop it down on the palette. And this is basically a glaze straight up out of the bottle. And you can even thin this down with medium glaze or water, or you can mix in other colors with it. I've been doing that as well. So there's all kinds of options that you can do um, outside of the box. But since I have this green on here, I can just go around it. But as you can see, it's just it's that's the translucent glaze. It's what I just created with the Andrea and the and the medium glaze. It's the exact same kind of thing. And you can build up on that. It's extremely thin. And then also, we have some Vallejo model wash here. Right? And out of, out of straight out of the bottle, it sticks to things and gives you kind of uh, nasty watermarks and stuff like that sometimes. You can add water to that and fan it out. 
And as we can see, the pigments start to separate. So we don't want that. We want to keep our colors in there. And so we can add in some medium glaze into that model wash. And it's gonna, with water, and it creates this translucent black. You see on my thumb there, you get painter's thumb. And it sticks a little bit better. It sticks just like the glaze we just created. And like that, hopefully that gets across that everything we do is in thin layers. There's really no, I know that some guys are looking for shortcuts and things like that. There's really no shortcuts that I can teach you. Um, all it is is practice. Let's get just our normal coat here so we can see how it covers. And so this is just our normal thin down paint. But how everything's moving, and we can work that medium glaze together, kind of blend those, right? Hopefully that helps with the consistency part and, and hopefully it'll help with future videos that I make. If you guys are painting along or you know, you're trying to get ideas for your, your own miniatures, this kind of consistency thing addresses that issue. Okay, once again, thank you guys so much for watching and taking part in the channel. Um, if there's anything else you have uh, questions about, please drop them in the, in the, in the comments below and I'll see, you, I'll see you in the next video.